Good morning, everyone. Welcome. How are we today? We don't know whether to put warm clothes on or not warm clothes. It's a bit hard to know what to dress, how to dress today, isn't it? So welcome to this Sunday with Golden Harvest Community Church. Thank you for joining us. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We honour you. And we ask that you pour in your grace on us today. Pour it in. Pour it in. Give us grace, Father. Grace. Grace. Give us grace. Open our ears and our eyes in the Spirit. And we ask that the Holy Spirit comes in and directs our, our path and helps us to understand and to open up today's message so that we can apply it to our lives as we go out into our communities this week in Jesus name. Amen. Well, getting a title is not my forte. <laughs> but I'm happy now. <laughs> Jesus calls out the hypocrite and we all have either, well, hopefully not deliberately, been a hypocrite at some time, but we've all experienced a hypocrite in our lives as well. And the definition of a hypocrite is a person who puts on a false appearance of virtue or religion. So they're, they're portraying something that they're not, they don't actually believe. They're they're being hypocritical. So we're going to start today in Matthew 15, 1 through 9. And this is going to lead us down the garden path. But hello, let's do this. <laughs> let's launch in. <laughs> so we're starting in Matthew 15, verse 1. Then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your d disciples transgress the tradition of the elders, for they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Now the Pharisees are stuck back in their old ways, in the old law, the law of Moses, and they can't move out of that. And we all know that once Jesus came, we, our faith is what gives us our eternal life. So they are still in the law, they're not moving into the faith and they should have been because they were the leaders of the time. And this is a little bit, I've got a little bit of a scenario, or not a scenario, a bit of an um, uh, explanation. So it says in their tradition of the elders, so they're going off their tradition. So the, I likened this as I was doing this to, and I know, Pastor Dean loves Papua New Guinea, but my husband works over there as well. And he's always saying how the locals over there, they are so godly, they love Jesus, they go to church, they love it, but yet they all have their rivals with their different clans over there and they just don't let it go. They have... Um, they have massive fights. There was a big one over there um, late last year when Brennan was over there and it was a rivalry thing against two clans. Now it's gone down generations after generations and generations and generations and generations. I don't even know if today's generation even know what they're fighting about. You know, like, but yet they're saying they're Christian but yet they're still hanging on to this tradition that they've got from way back when. And it's probably the best example that I can give to you of what this is meaning. So, you know, if, they, if, if the Papua New Guinea people were truly loving Jesus and wanting to be a Christian and doing as God tells them, they would let all of that go. But for just like the Pharisees, they're hanging on to it like it's, you know, we've, we've got to um, stand up for our family and, and for our ancestors because great uncle Johnny had a blue with your great uncle Roger. I mean, really? Like, 
but it still does happen today, probably not to the extent that they do it over in Papua New Guinea, we probably do it here too. Um, and don't let, like, hold on to those grudges that we get against somebody, we hold on to them and we don't let them go and then our beliefs get set aside and the, the act of revenge comes in place of that and it's not healthy, not healthy at all. Moving on to verse 3, he answered and said to them, so Jesus is answering them saying, why do you also transgress the com commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded saying, honour your father and your mother and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his mother or father, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Then he needed not honour his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Now that prophet, notice it's not a prophet. <laughs> it's the prophet as in you get your wages, you get more than what you thought you were going to get or you're paying for something and they've got their mark up on it and it's, you get a little bit more. It's the gift from God. It's what he's giving you and it's a blessing from God. And that's what we want is the blessings. But if we're going to stay in our traditions and honour our traditions and not honour God, then you're not going to get the blessing, are you? Not at all. No way. <laughs> Verse 7. Hypocrites. Here we go. Jesus is calling them out. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So by saying this, the Pharisees and the, and the scribes, Jesus offends them. So they, in the verses moving on, you'll read that one of the disciples says to him, do you know you just offended them by calling them out? <laughs> Jesus is like, care factor? <laughs> Seriously, come on. <laughs> and that's what happens. When we call out a hypocrite, we offend them. Because how dare we know what their belief is and, and that yet they're, they're saying or doing the complete opposite to what they, they really truly believe. So it always, calling them out always puts them on the back foot. And then they get um, cranky and revengeful and all those things. Something like, have you ever been asked to do something? I've had this, you know, you get asked to do something that you really don't want to do, but you say yes anyway. And then you're like, oh, I really don't. You don't feel good about it, you don't want to do it, but you can't say no to that person for whatever reason it is. It's just, and then the time comes and you have to do it and you sort of disappear. You're gone. <laughs> you're not there. <laughs> you just make sure that you're, you're not, um, not available. So because you just don't, your heart's not in it. You know that it's not what you want to do. It does happen, trust me. Ephesians 4.18 ESV. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of hearts. So we're talking, this is, talking about the Gentiles, not the Pharisees, but the Pharisees are more to do with the church. These are the Gentiles, you and I. And alienated is adhoring and it's regard with disgust and hatred. It's a pretty powerful word, isn't it? Like to adhor somebody, you, you hate them. That's a, I always say that the hate is just one of those words that should be struck out of the Bible or out of the dictionary. <laughs> so... Hardness, the hardness of the heart, as I found this so interesting, it's actually a callus. So it's a callus that you would get on your hand 
that you get from doing repetitive hard work. You know, people get calluses on their, on their feet from wearing the wrong shoes and, and that sort of thing. That's the sort of hardening of the heart that we're talking about. You know how hard that is to remove? If you've ever had a callus, you know how hard it is to get rid of it. I'm, I'm blessed with nice soft hands because I'm in oil all day at work. <laughs> but someone like my husband, he's got calluses all over his hands from all the, you know, the heavy lifting and the hard work that he does. And he has to do that so that his hands can endure what he's got to do. So they've, they've got to toughen up. People that in tribes and that that don't wear shoes have got very calloused feet so that they can walk on the ground without shoes on. So, you know, that's, that's, so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the hardness of the heart. It's a calloused heart. And when we harden our heart, our eyes are blind and our soul is darkened. And our soul, our heart is part of our soul. So it changes your whole world. It's a, um, and it's a metaphor for a sinner who continually sins and is blinded by their, their actions. Pretty powerful, isn't it? Luke 16, 14 through 15. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money also heard all these things and they derided him. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourself before men, but God knows your hearts for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Derided him. It's in the Greek word, no, I don't, the Greek word's this long, okay, and I can't say it. I'm going to sound silly. Okay, I'll have a go. Ekmukerizo. Best I can do. Sorry, best I can do. But it means to turn your nose up. It means you're a snob. <laughs> and it's to blow someone off. So if you, um, if you reread that, also heard all these things and they snobbed him or they blew him off. You know, you've done, you know, when you're in the, in the marketplace and, and someone's there with leaflets and they're trying to hand them out and all you're, you're doing is you just want to go and do your shopping you don't want to get caught by the guy trying to sell you foxtel or, or a Christian trying to get you to come to Jesus or whatever it is. You snob them. You just, no, nah, you put your head down, you look the other way and you just take off and leave them. That's what they do. So, and all these things refers to previous verses, which in verse um, 13, it says, you cannot serve God and mammon. So you can't have both can't have God and you can't have the worldly things that everyone thinks. All those possessions that you think are so important to you, you can't have them. Well, you can have them, but you're not allowed to use them as idols. Don't have them as idols. God's got to be your number one in everything. Changed my life when I changed that big time. Isaiah 29, 13. Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honour me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. So this refers back to Matthew 15, 8, where these people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips but their heart is far from me. And what people say doesn't match their actions. So when, we, when we're going to say something, but then we go out and do something completely different. You know those people, you've, you've come across them, they'll say something and then all of a sudden, I had um, a son-in-law once that he used to come home with my daughter and he'd sit down and he'd go, oh, Sandy, I just want to, I want to get rid of all my debts and I want to start, you know, saving money so that Jess and I can buy a house and we can settle down and da-da-da-da-da. And I'd, so I'd sit down and we'd 
spend hours getting a plan together on how he could um, you know, get rid of all of his debts and consolidate his debts and you know, pay them all off. And then he'd get back home and he'd get on Facebook and he'd find a motorbike or a car or something and he'd put to buy or not to buy. And I just, what was that all about? <laughs> you know, why did I spend all that time with him when he had no intentions? He was just trying, I think he knew I didn't really like him. <laughs> so, but he was trying to win me over and the more I saw that of him, it moved me further away. So I was quite happy the day Jess told me they were no longer together. Sorry, <laughs> Jess, but, you know, these are the things. When people say one thing and go and their actions are completely different to what they're, what's coming out of their mouth, people don't realise words hurt. Words stick with somebody for a very, very long time. You know, that old saying, sticks and stones don't break my bones. Names will never hurt me. Yeah, right. They hurt. Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. God looks and requires your heart. That's what he's after. He, he wants you to follow him. Because, and, and to see him and to see what he's doing, just like Jesus. Jesus always followed what the Father did. He never said anything if the Father didn't say it. He didn't do anything if the Father didn't do it. And this is what we're supposed to be. It's supposed to be our, our example of how we should be living here on earth. Give me your heart means to listen to me carefully and observe what I'm going to teach you. Be teachable, okay? We can all learn something. It's a good day, don't we say it? We say it all the time. It's a good day if you learn something. <laughs> you know, or you know, you hear people say, well, I learned something today, and they get a little bit excited. They've got that spring in their voice, and you can hear that they're, they're a bit joyous because, wow, I didn't know that. That's really cool. We need to be teachable. We need to be able to, to step back and realise that we don't know it all and that there is always something out there. I think the more you learn, the more you know you don't know. That's how I've learned with massage, learning the human body and how the body works. Wow, seriously. There's no way known I can know it all for, in anatomy because there's muscles there that some people don't even get born with anymore, but yet some people do have it. So... You know, and I don't have x-ray vision, unfortunately. God hasn't given me that gift yet. Yet. <laughs> I keep asking for it. <laughs> How cool would that be? <laughs> okay, Matthew 23, 2 through 4. The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so do and ob observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their fingers. What they taught us was dependable, but their practices aren't. So the Pharisees were out there preaching, they were preaching the word, they were doing a good job with that, but their actions weren't good. And how many people or churches, we're not naming names or anything, but, you know, that only teach what they want you to know. Or they teach it, but then they go out, the, somebody in the church, whether it be a pastor or somebody within the church who might be an elder or something, is out there having an affair or... You know, they're, they're a clep, is it a kleptomaniac? Or they steal things, you know, they can't help themselves. They've just got to, got to do that sort of stuff. Like, you can't be one thing but 
or say one thing and portray it to be something else because people see it. You know, if you're coming to church and saying, oh, a gossip is the best example. <coughs> How many people that go to church are the ones that go home and they know everything about everybody and how it happened, when it happened, but the poor person that they're talking about has no idea what they're talking about. Someone said that to me the other day. It's good that everyone else knows what I'm doing. <laughs> I went, yeah, <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> It's the good old saying of do as I say and not as I, say, not as I do, isn't it? The, some parents do that with their kids as they're bringing them up. Do as I say, not as I do. If they're a smoker, don't want you to smoke, but yet they're sitting there with a cigarette. Thankfully, I never smoked. And they wouldn't help anyone that needed help. So they were really happily, the Pharisees were very good, at giving out all the hard work or the burdens to everybody else. And, and they were actually calling out people that weren't keeping the law of Moses. And they would belittle them and make them feel bad, just like what they did with Jesus. They were trying to call him out all the time. But instead what they should have been doing is taking that person under their wing and guiding them and helping them to improve their lives. But nah. And then meanwhile, they're out doing their thing. So, and their expectations are much more than their, expe their expectations of others are far greater than their expectations of themselves. It's pretty sad. Matthew 23, 13. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. So what does that mean? Jesus is, accuses them of shutting the kingdom of heaven against men so they can't enter. We're talking about our salvation. This was pretty mind-blowing when I read this one. Where you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men because they're too busy following the law and trying to keep the law and persecuting everybody that's not instead of moving by faith. But they were doing their bit, but they were, weren't doing it. They're doing it in the church, but they're not doing it in person. When they were out, they had, it was like they had, they were like sheep with wolves clothing on. It's the best way to describe it, isn't it? They were one thing at church, and then out in the community, and there it does go on. The scriptures all reveal all this. Ready? Luke 11.52. Woe to you, you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in you hindered. Jesus calls the scribes and the Pharisees lawyers, because in the next verse, which I haven't got here, it actually says, they cross-examine him about many things. So he's calling them out. And repentance is the door of admission into the kingdom. And the Pharisees did not see that they should repent for anything. Anything that they did, if they did anything wrong, they never thought that they had to repent. Quite funny, as, as I was reading this, the key, I've been at home doing a, a, a course with a um, pastor in America and in the course she's held up these keys and she said to, you know, to everyone, these are the keys to heaven and she's got a whole heap of them and they were really old, key, they were beautiful and all of a sudden I went, I've got one of those keys. 
and I don't know where it came from. It just appeared one day in my house. I had to go and find it. I've now got it hanging in my office at home, but, and I should have bought it to show you because it, it was a beautiful old key and I'm sure it opens a door somewhere. Maybe, maybe it's heaven's door. I don't know. Maybe I'll be taking it with me. The key of knowledge doesn't mean the key to open knowledge, but knowledge as the only key to open heaven. And what's the key? Pharisees aren't t teaching eternal life. That's the key. Etern eternal life. Salvation. John 17, 3, Amplify Classic. And this is eternal life. Dun dun! Where's the drum roll? <laughs> Thanks, Bell. <laughs> it means to know, to perceive, recognize, become acquainted with and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. So the Pharisees and the scribes took eternal life away from the people because they, they wouldn't get, wouldn't let um, them go let go of their traditions. They just, they hung on like a tug of war. Oh no, no, our traditions are just too important. And because of that, they were blindsided and couldn't really see that they had to let them go for them to move into their faith and to move and believe that Jesus was who he said he was. He was right there in front of him, <laughs> you know, and they're, they're preaching that they're going to see, they're going to recognise, and there he was right there and he's saying, I'm him. And they're going, no, you're not. We know you, you know. Your father was a carpenter. Really? And they say, if you know, so that tells you that their faith isn't there because if they, if they really knew, if Jesus was really there and they had recognised him, would have been through their faith, which is what Peter did when he, he turned around and said that Jesus was the Messiah. He was from, from God. He came from the heavens. That was because of his faith and Jesus had, God had given that to him. He didn't know that as a, a normal human being. It was his faith that, that was the revealer of that. I am getting ahead of myself, aren't I? <laughs> Matthew 23, 14. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you swallow up widows' houses and for a pretense to cover it up, make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive the greater condemnation and the heavier sentence. So the Pharisees w would actually go and have a relationship with a widow. How hypocritical is that? Because I'm going to prove this one to you in a minute. But what they would do, they'd have a relationship and then say in a lot of cases it was an intimate relationship with a widow to take her inheritance that her husband had left her for themselves. This is what they were doing. But I'm going to show, show you why I say this is hypocritical, okay? This is why. John 8, 3a, 5 and 7. Then the scribes and Pharisees, so I'm skipping three, but I've put it all on one slide, so stay, bear with me. <laughs> then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. Verse 5. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Verse 7. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And what happened? They all left. She didn't get stoned. Because they had all sinned. So that's why I say the Pharisees, that's why Jesus got to call them out. Although this probably hadn't happened then, but... 
So the Pharisees don't recognise sin for sin, do they? Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise, so anise is dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Weightier matters. So they are the justice and mercy towards men and faith in God. How many of us have gone out and and, um, condemned somebody before we've considered what God thinks about them or what God's perspective on that matter could be? We jump to conclusions We condemn a person before they should be condemned. Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the law require of you but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So we don't need an animal or a human sacrifice anymore. The Old Testament is full of it. That's why I don't like reading it. Seriously, yuck, blood and guts. Might might as well have been a horror story. Especially, is it Leviticus? It's just full of it. It's just, it's like, (laughs) give me nightmares. I couldn't read it. (laughs) We don't need the sacrificial lamb because we got him because it was Jesus He was the last one to be sacrificed for you and me, for our sins. You can't have justice and mercy or be humble if you're portraying to be a hypocrite because it's a sin. Never thought of that. It's pretty amazing what's declared (laughs) as a sin. (laughs) When you read the, read the, um, the Bible, it actually enlightens you quite a lot to what is seen as a sin that we think is okay. And that's why you need to read the Bible because these things come out at you and all of a sudden you go, oh, you know, things like listening to your favourite band, Akka Daka, this Satanists. You know, think about it. Highway to hell. Yeah, right. I don't listen to it anymore. Hosea 6.6 6, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Amen and amen. Do you, do you know what mercy is? It's favour. It's loving kindness towards God. And it's a good deed. And God just wants us to know him. Not worry about these sacrifices. There's some religions out there that have that I've heard of that, you know, they they have a meal and they'll have a meal for their God and it sits in the corner. I, I, I don't get that. How do they think? Oh, yeah, anyway, let's not go there. Zip! <laughs> Matthew 23, 25 through 26. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Jesus is referring to the Pharisees with this, with all of these scriptures. Okay? So what they're saying is, is the Pharisees, they get all dolled up, put on their clean gowns, and they walk amongst the people and portray themselves to be 
these great people, these great leaders, but their inside is not clean because they're doing all the wrong things. But nobody's seeing it because they're out. How many people do you know that do that? That go out and portray themselves to be this upright, standing, well-mannered, good person, but at home they've got a really bad mouth, they abuse people, particularly their families, you know, people that, that abuse their, well, let's use men, but sorry, it's not always men, okay, it can be women too. Um, these people that abuse children, they do it in closed doors. People that, that um, molest the children, they go out, they're upstairs. How many times do you hear a judge or a um, politician or a CEO of a company? They're, they're up there being good models people out in the community, but when they go home, they're abusing children. They do it behind closed doors. This is what the Pharisees are doing. They're doing a similar thing or the same thing. I'm not saying they're abusing, abusing children, but they're pretending to be something they're not when they're in the public eye. You know, you get actors. Actors go out and they do a movie or something and they portray to be something but on the inside, in their own personal lives, everything's falling apart. They can't handle being in the limelight anymore. Their lives are not their lives because, you know, there's such a demand on them and the, the media are on the, their tail. They're making stories up about them. So they fall to pieces and go to drugs. But when they're out in the public, they've got to pretend they've got to have the, the right clothing on, they've got to look the right way, they've got to do this, they've got to act that way. It's the same thing. It's hypocritical. They can't be themselves because people like actors, I don't think they actually know who they are inside sometimes. They've portrayed so many different roles in their lives. I don't... I've got a girlfriend I went to school with. She's an actress and she's a beautiful person. But she's changed a lot since I went to school with her. So, but I'm not saying she's a bad person. She's just not the same person I knew. So. Luke 11, 40 through 41. You senseless, foolish, stupid ones, acting without reflection or intelligence. Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But did dedicate your inner self and give as do donations to the poor of those things which are within of inward righteousness. And behold, everything is purified and clean for you. So they appeared to be good people. The Pharisees just they had the walk but they didn't have the talk or they had the talk and they didn't have the walk. <laughs> oh, which way is that going? <laughs> okay, here, here it goes. I have a really good way of turning things around the wrong way. But anyway, you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> the que they're squeaky clean on the outside but on the inside... They haven't done their housework. They haven't cleaned up. <laughs> and they don't want to. And when you help the poor, your, your generosity and your giving and, and your helping of another person that's in need, that's showing your heart. That's when God comes in and, and, and he blesses you with, a gift of sorts it doesn't you know it could be anything I know I gifted a massage to a lady I've told this story many times I think but anyway we'll tell it again I had a lady come in and it was school holidays and the cost of the massage was 
more than she could really afford, but she needed it. But she also needed to spend time with the kids on in school holidays, at least take them. She wanted to take the kids to Wagga and go to the movies and, you know, play 10-pin bowling with them and just have a day out. She couldn't afford the fuel and she couldn't afford the tickets to do that because she was having the massage. And God put it on my heart during that massage because she's telling me this is what she wanted to do. She wasn't asking me to give it to her for nothing. She had no idea what I was, what I was getting. Anyway, at the end of the massage, I said to her, I don't want your money. Please take this, mess, this today's massage as a gift. Please go and take that money. Put fuel in your car. Take your kids to Wagga for the day. And she cried. She cried because I cared enough to do that for her. I get to do that because I work for myself. And I can pick and choose if I want to. If it's put on my heart, if God gives me that, that leading to give somebody something, I can do that. It's my time. It's also, yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> it's my muscle. <laughs> but I get to bless them. But then I had to go and buy paint. And I'm in Bunnings and I stood there and I waited. This is after, this is a week or two after. And I had to wait 45 minutes to be served. And I just stood there and there's this staff, they're all walking past me. Are you not served yet? No. And they just, okay, oh, we'll go and find somebody. Why can't you serve me? <laughs> Obviously, you have to be trained to be in the paint section. So you can't just have anyone serve you. By the time the lady came to serve me and give me my, like, do my paint up for me, she said to me, I'm marking this down for you. I think I got it for nearly half price. You know, and all I did was thank God because I went, that's what, because I did that for this lady, he's repaid me, you know? Yes, I had to wait half an hour or 45, it was more 45 minutes, nearly an hour by the time I got served, but I still got the blessing and I didn't get cranky. <laughs> which is even a bigger blessing because Sandy used to be, whew, yeah, we don't even go there. <laughs> Sandy's not the girl she once was. <laughs> That's a good thing. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Matthew 23, 27 through 28. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Whitewashed. It's plaster. I'm well known to plaster these days. Trust me but it's lime. Lime makes it white and it makes it look better. It's like, it's like painting the exterior of your home. It makes it look nicer if you, if you keep it painted and maintained and, and that. So the tombs is actually the Pharisees um, and they're whitewashed to look good on the outside. So they're clothing. It's, it's what they're wearing when they're out in the community. And the tombs is it's also in scripture, there's another word, and I don't know if I'm going to say this right because I don't know if I've ever said this word before. It's sep sepulcher, is that right? Huh? <laughs> oh, no. Sepulcher. Sepulcher, there you go. It's actually a grave <laughs> or it's a burial place. We now have a bird inside the hall. And the inside is full of hypocrisy, someone acting under a mask. So they're, portray they're portraying something that they're not. They're not, um, not being who they're supposed to be. So, and they have total disregard for God's law. His written and living word. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bird whisperer. <laughs> okay, Psalms 5, <laughs> verse 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth, their inward part is destruction, their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Their inward part is, is destruction means that thoughts and motives are utterly corrupt and bent on destruction. They, they just want to destroy. And the open tomb is stinking with corruption and ready to devour their victims. They're narcissists. And flatter with their tongue, it's insincere flattery. How many times have you told someone they look nice when they really don't? <laughs> like when I went, um, went over to, I took Jill over the last week to pick up Brendan's ute and um, she, we were in a, a shop and she was trying on this leather, well, it was more of a leather look jacket and it just wasn't her. It was a beautiful jacket, just wasn't Jill. She would have looked like mutton done up as lamb. Sorry, Jill. Love you. <laughs> but I, ha I, had a, I could make a decision on that split second. I had the opportunity just to walk away and not say a word. But instead I just went, nah, you're not going home with that. <laughs> and she looked at me and she goes, oh, don't you think? I've always wanted a leather jacket. No, it's not you. And it wasn't. It was not. It just... It, it, Jill's a beautiful, earthy-looking woman and she's grounded and loves God and she's just amazing and that jacket just made her look wrong on so many levels. And then I walked around the corner and remember the old duffel coat? They had one. She actually wore it to church last week. They had one there and it was it was, cra it was beautiful and it was her to a T. And when she walked into church last week, she looked amazing. She was wearing it because she was freezing cold and I just went, oh, I was so blessed because she wore that jacket and I'd picked it and it looked awesome. It really, really did look nice. And even her husband, Chris, he just was like, I would never have picked that. <laughs> and I was just like, well... Sorry, but I wasn't letting her walk out with what she was trying on. I had a choice. I could make out, I could let her walk out and, and bring that home and wear it and think that she looked great in it when it just looked wrong. It wasn't a horrible um, jacket. It was a beautiful jacket. It just wasn't right on her. I had a choice. I could still let her buy it, spend the money. No, I'm not like that. You're not having that because it don't suit you. <laughs> so if you don't want the truth, don't come and ask me, okay? Because I can't lie. I don't want to lie. <laughs> okay, moving on. Matthew 23, 29 through 30. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of righteousness and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Adorn the monuments of righteousness. It means the scribes and the Pharisees were only righteous in public. They were good at this, hey? They, were, they had everyone fooled. If you watch the movies where they, they go through the book of John or something and... The Pharisees and they're so upstanding and they're so right. They look well. They look righteous, but they're not. It's a bit ironic, isn't it, that Jesus calls them out on the killing of the of the prophet when they're actually plotting to kill Jesus. And if we lived in the days of Jesus when he walked the earth, would we have recognised him? Would we have been a part of his disciples? Would we have accepted him as who he said he was? It's food for thought, isn't it?
People are out there today saying they want to go to heaven but yet they're gossiping, they're swearing, they're stealing, being hypocritical, saying one thing and doing another. So how do we overcome being a hypocrite? Well, good thing I've done my studies. <laughs> Luke 9, 5 tells us, And whoever will not receive you when you go out of the city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So if you're with somebody who's hypocritical or just lying or whatever, you don't have to hang around. And in fact, you shouldn't. And you shouldn't let it stay on you either. Okay? Shake it off, it's not yours. It's like if somebody comes and puts a burden on you, it's not your burden to worry about. You can sit and listen and help direct them to their answer. But it's not yours. So shake it off. Let it go. Acts 3.19 Repent! <laughs> Therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is the best way to get rid of anything. But repentance does mean that you're going to turn away from doing it too. So you, if you're going to repent for it, you're going to make sure you're ready to let it go. You'll stop doing those things. So you don't want to go and repent and then turn around two seconds later and go back and do it. A bit pointless. Okay? And our last scripture. Woohoo! I made it. Romans 10.9 That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen and amen, hey? Isn't that what we all want? So Lord, we come to you right now and we repent for being hypocritical, for being judgmental and for being argumentative towards any person in our lives right now. And we lift those people up to you, Father, and put them in your light, put them in your midst and we ask for their salvation to come in. And for all of those that are out there right now that are, are wanting a better path and don't want to be like the Pharisees and don't want to be somebody they're really not <laughs> and you're ready to commit your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to follow me. I haven't written this one up today. Sorry. But we're just going to do it from the heart today. It's just going to come out naturally. You can make it your own prayer. You can say it in your own way. So say after me, or, or make it up, whatever, doesn't matter. Dear God, I am a sinner. And I know that I need to change my ways. And I need help. I need Jesus. I know that he died on the cross for me, and he took all of my sins to hell, and he left them there. And that his blood on the cross has redeemed me. Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart and direct my path every day as I take up my own cross. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, don't be a hypocrite. <laughs> Go out there and bless everybody that you can. We hope that you have a great week. Uh, Pastor Dean's on radio tonight. We haven't mentioned the radio for quite a while. Seven o'clock encounter on in 94.5 Gold FM here in West Wyalong. Yeah. 
and yeah, live stream if you're out of town. So when you go on to the to the um, app that does the live stream, it actually comes up as Wagga Wagga. Okay, so that is us, and it'll have a a picture of a sign 94.5 gold. That is the um, radio channel that you need to be tuning into. And we hope that you have a wonderful week. I hope today's message blessed you because it's blessed me because it came out great. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> no. Look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. See ya.